Good morning. I am Reverend Susan Carol Roy, and it is my privilege to serve as the Director of Pastoral Care at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Is anyone excited about being here this morning? I know that there are people who are excited in the simulcast room because they have called and begged to be here today. So from our room to your room, uh, we welcome you. One group of people who has been excited enough about this event to do a whole lot of work for many, many months uh, has been our event planning group. They are wearing green ribbons and they are all outside in the hallway checking off tasks from their ever elusive to-do list. But please join me in thanking them. The volunteers are also wearing green ribbons. Our volunteers have folded, stopped, collated, logged, hauled, fetched, created, loaned, assisted, and arrived eager and happy to be here before dawn. So please join me in thanking them. We are especially honored to have with us today the Lax family and you will have a moment to welcome them later in the program. They are wearing orange ribbons, and they invite you to engage them in conversation. The Lax family discussion, originally scheduled for this afternoon, has been canceled at their request on the advice of their attorney. There are Q&A cards in your packet. During Rebecca Splitt's presentation, the volunteers will collect your questions for that session. The volunteers will walk through the ballrooms in 15-minute increments. They will hold up those index cards. That's your clue to hold up your index card so that they can collect them so that we can start uh, that session in a timely manner. Today, we welcome and honor we remember and honor Henrietta Lacks. We tell her story and we connect with our own. Many of you have stories about how you came to be here today. Many of your stories have been shaped by her story. For some, this symposium may even serve as another chapter, another verse, another line in those ever-growing stories. In their book, Mighty Stories, Dangerous Rituals, theologians Herbert Anderson and Edward Foley focus our attention on the power of story when they write. The power of narrative is that it enables us to make deep human connections that transcend unfamiliarity in locale and experience. Again, the power of narrative is that it enables us to make deep human connections that transcend unfamiliarity in locale and experience. It is as if stories have mystical power to invite us willingly or unwillingly to enter unknown worlds. Today we embrace the story of Henry Etta Lacks from many perspectives. There are storytellers here today from disciplines in both the sciences and the humanities. We are interdisciplinary both as presenters and as an audience. There are among us members of the Lax family, an accomplished author, scientists, lawyers, theologians, social workers, nurses, healthcare providers, students, patients, doctors, community members, cancer survivors and those who mourn lives ended way too early by the ravages of that disease. As individuals and as communities, we represent an interdisciplinary group devoted to healing body, mind, and spirit. The story of our lives may move us to laugh and they may move us to cry. They are stories of joy and shame, hopes and disappointments. They are stories that remind us of our shared humanity through simple, common acts like painting our nails red. 
Well, that was a bit of a challenge for me. <laughs> but at least the dog's nose now matches his collar. <laughs> Our stories may be embellished and polished or raw and rare. But our stories are always sacred, holy, and unique. Storytelling and story listening are sacred acts which we approach with humility and respect. Let us be guided by the words of the poet Langston Hughes in his poem entitled, The Dream Keeper. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from the two rough fingers of the world. And now please join me in welcoming Mr. Jeffrey Grivis, President and CEO of the University of Maryland Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. What a crowd we have here this morning. This is about three times I think what our original projections were, so I'm, I'm very proud to say I'm here this morning as the President and Chief Executive Officer of the University of Maryland Medical Center. And on behalf of our 6,000 employees, 1,000 physicians, uh, and lots of people who take care of special people every day, I'm proud to welcome you here to our symposium today. I have to also tell you, when I was scurrying around, getting ready this morning, I, could, I, just, I just kept saying to myself, I forgot something, I forgot something. Now I realize what I forgot. I didn't do the red thing. I, I didn't get the memo. So uh, we'll, we'll work on that. But as I said, this is a magnificent tournament. Oh, thank you. Jesse, can, you, can you help me? I'm not good at this. Okay. I should have known. I should have known. All right, I'm glad we're all in a very good mood this morning. Let me start by saying this, in addition to really the impressive crowd here, I, I have to tell you, I'm always impressed and I'm energized when we see young adults and high school students come to something like this. Very good to see you here. Always very good to see you here. It's always it's good to have a bright look at what's coming in the future. Um, and, I, and, I, and I know you will learn today from the good things we've done in the health profession and the things we could have done better. And you'll hear a lot of that today. And again, I really applaud your attendance and your interest here today. Uh, the presence of everybody here today testifies not only to the storytelling of our special guest, Rebecca Sloot, who will address us shortly, uh, but also to the powerful and compelling nature of Mrs. Henrietta Lack's life, her sacrifice, and the sacrifice of her very special family. But before we go any further, it is my pleasure to introduce to you this very special family. Please stand and welcome the family and friends of Henrietta and David Lacks. caregiver, and a human being to the Lacks family for their contribution of Henrietta 
and the sacrifice of the entire family. Again, like I said, he will be addressing the celebration in the evening. He looks forward to meeting all of you then, and he's sorry he couldn't be here today. Um, as president and CEO of an academic medical center, our caregivers administer care on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, minute to minute, to over a thousand patients every day. Much of that care is based on the results of the research on the cells of Henrietta Lacks, yet only a very few people knew the history uh, and the woman behind the HeLa cells that made such care possible. And that only really became more known once Rebecca Sloot and Deborah Lacks became good friends and partners in the education of all of us. This symposium will enable you to hear the stories and the lessons captured in a very special book. But you will also have an opportunity to hear from an expert panel of scientists and caregivers about the care and ethical challenges they confront and every effort to advance medical science and the treatment of patients on this campus. You'll also hear about the challenges of empowering individuals and communities to take ownership of their health in a society where health disparities are still a significant problem even 60 years after the special sacrifice of Henrietta Lacks.